Go to tradethembi.com. This is John's reports for the 12th, and we continue in the same, well, flat period like we were talking about. But the volatility has been decent. Like yesterday, we had the nice little dip. Got bought back, uh, right back above the ABM green. Put the level there. It was 2341 range. Uh, just like we were talking about. But again, look at this. This is a very weak shakeout. Uh, we did finally get the orange, though, breaking out of the zone, which gives us an indication that we might start to see some more directional volatility, at least um, now that we're moved out. Now, it doesn't look all that great. You do have the green crossing a dropping red, which is usually not all that terrific, and a continuation of steel uh, dipping. So probably more of the same. Uh, Nasdaq's flat. You can see that we've been in this... Uh, it's not even a short cycle. Um, interesting, no, the euro, uh, holding on right here. This is uh, another one of those critical lines that central banks have to hold on to. What is uh, becoming an interesting one in the French uh, race is now the far left candidate is making a move and you could have a uh, far right and a far left uh, for the general election. That would be very fun. Um, probably not so much for the euro, but uh, that's okay. And. Um, this is bizarre, but uh, been a continuation move for the uh, bonds. Uh, cyan under red. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, it's an interesting trade. Uh, this bet on deflation. So you would expect gold to be suffering as well as oil, and you've got just the opposite effects going on there. So it's a, it appears to be a flight to safety situation uh, as people are trying to ease out of equities but the problem with that is is it's only if the equities don't fall then there's only one way for them to go is back up when uh, that risk off trade uh, changes and there's gold see so continue we expected this to move higher and it's not going to stop uh, sure there's world tensions in that but i don't think it's uh, driven by that uh, a lot of this is going to be uh, uh, future buying pre-planning ahead of time let me shrink this intraday so we had the decay that was starting. We had a couple of resets, but everything pretty much stayed flat with price and uh, it was a clear indication that we were just gonna be falling more apart. Um, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And we reset at the bottoms, came back up to some decent, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a lot, but they were still worth five, six plus points. And then we decayed a lot more. Reset down at the very bottom was the final one right down here, literally right at the base. and. It slowly worked its way back up. Uh, we stayed above that 50% threshold. Once we got over it, you know, this becomes an alternative trade too, even just within the Fibonacci. Is that once you're above that 50%, boom, follow that. You could also do the same thing with the 23. Uh, it's a little more powerful at the 50, particularly if you have positive shakeout at that particular point, or at least working to it in this case. Uh, it sustained itself all the way through, and we just ended up, uh, every time we got anywhere close to it, uh, it was bought up, and uh, now it's continuing to rise, so it just creates new levels. All good stuff, still uh, continuing on uh, making some of those adjustments with the ABM, and then I know it, uh, the green, for instance, breaks during uh, dropout points, and so I'm uh, addressing some of that language to see what we can do for that, um, so that it continues. It is part and parcel of what happens during a short and the change in uh, the reading there, but uh, we'll make those adjustments. As always, though, continue to look for me on the uh, Skype chat. I'm going to keep uh, plugging away on these things so that I can uh, put out some more updates for them. Trade well.